if we do not understand where they are with their reading, with their levels of speaking, with their vocabulary, how much they remember, how much they don't remember, how can we proceed from there? So let's get into the nitty gritty. You start your new term, you start your new course. What can you do? Now, some teachers might go for the obvious choice, use placement tests. And placement tests, um, a lot of schools have placement tests. Um, let me just remind you what placement tests are. Placement tests are the kind of tests that you give to new students to identify where they are in their English language skills. A lot of um, courses and course books come with placement tests because how do you know which course book to start with right do you use language hub intermediate or do you start with language hub and um, elementary where do you start and a lot of these course books offer placement tests online that you could do to help identify which book to start with or where on the cef framework you stand so you could easily use a placement test to find out where students are Here's one from Macmillan, open mind, um, and here's an example of a placement test. Question number one, we mm, at school. Two, my English teacher is nice. Oh, thank you very much. Um, your name, our name, her name is Anna. Anna Hasper, I think that's talking about you. Um, <laughs> and this is an example. I'm sure you all know placement tests very, very well. So we could try using these at the start of a term. Macmillan, as um, Will mentioned earlier, has also started to include back to school um, supplementary materials uh, with a lot of their popular, popular courses. So like the one you saw, Open Mind, has its own back to school start of year tests that are available online. So these are not the placement tests. These are separate. These are specially created to help students and teachers um, start the school year or the school term. Uh, and to help assess where they are now. So here's an example. This is from Open Mind. Um, and like the placement test, we see um, discrete item tests. So when I say discrete item tests, I mean tests to look at if you know a particular grammar form, um, how to use prepositions, uh, whether the vocabulary collocates or not. So it tests your grammar, it tests your vocabulary um, as individual items. Do you know what the past participle is, for example? Um, if you use Macmillan courses, do check out the Teacher Resource Centre. Um, if you look at this slide, right at the bottom right, you see that MacmillanMind.com Teacher Resource Centre. That's what you want to check out. Um, and even if you don't use um, say open mind if you use another one of Macmillan's courses do check out the teacher resource center because there are quite a lot of new supplementary materials available there um, including start of year back to school tests that you could use with your students it is very tempting to talk about the gap between John and Javier Earlier, we talked about John being the dream student <laughs> who's, um, you know, worked really hard during the lockdown and has somehow gone from beginner to advanced in the last four months. <laughs> and then you have Javier, who has the reality of life, of juggling work, kids and the lockdown and the, and the psychological um, difficulties with his situation and, and, and really hasn't been able to improve and work on his English. It is sometimes t very tempting to compare Javier and John and say, hey, John, why can't you be a bit like Javier? Well, John isn't Javier. Javier isn't John. They have very different circumstances and things to cope with. And it's really unfair to compare them both. Assessments should compare the performance of students to a set of expectations. That set of expectation can be the CEF framework, for example. We are not here to compare it to the performance of other students. So what set of expectations can we use? 
So again, going back to what we talked about earlier with Open Minds teacher resource packs that I see some of you are starting to talk about in the chat field. Um, this is a mapping tool that's offered with that grammar and vocabulary test you just saw with Open Mind. And it allows teachers to see, okay, so students answered questions one to five correctly. And so I guess they know this grammar well, I don't have to do them again. But they're not so good with questions six and seven. So maybe we need to review unit five, page 50 and unit six, page 64 again. Now this is directly mapped onto Open Mind, the course book. So if you use that course book, it makes it really easy for you to know which pages exactly you need to be reviewing or you need to, you know, do some recycling work with. But I would strongly suggest that we don't just stop there. Don't stop with placement tests or these discrete item tests. Because just because someone can, can use the past participle correctly, just because they know when to put the and a, uh, does not mean that they can do it well when speaking in an interactive situation, in a communicative situation. Discrete item tests are good at measuring the student's knowledge of grammar, vocabulary, etc. It is not so good at measuring the student's communicative competence. How can they actually use English, which is really the ultimate goal? So I strongly suggest that teachers supplement these discrete item tests with integrative tests. Yes, Anna, absolutely. Discrete item tests helps you know that students know this stuff, but we need them to show that they can practice and use the stuff. So what do I mean by integrative tests? It is a test that allows you to see their grammar and vocabulary in use, in a sentence, in a communication situation, in a chat, in a conversation. It allows you to observe, as I said, their communicative competence. How good are they at actually communicating in English? Are they able to use language appropriately? You might know the seven uses of the present perfect, but can you actually use them in conversation appropriately? Can you make sure that your sentences, your paragraphs, if you're writing, are cohesive? Are you coherent? You might be making lots of grammatically correct sentences, but you make absolutely no sense. That's totally possible. So are you coherent? Do you have communicative strategies to help you in a conversation? Do you know when to ask, to clarify, to ask questions, to ask people to slow down? Do you know when to signpost? So what can we do to test someone in such a way? We could use group discussions. How did you spend your time during the lockdown? What did you find most difficult about the lockdown? Students are put in groups and pairs. They talk about this. You walk around, you monitor their use of language and you make notes. Remembering that these are summative, sorry, formative tests. We're doing this to help us as teachers know where they are now. We're helping us teachers understand what we can do to plan our course better to help them with where they are with their language now. So the students don't really need to know that you're testing them. They only need to know that you want them to do a group discussion. You could have a, a debate. Some people say that this lockdown period has been good for the environment. Do you agree? Group A agrees, group B disagrees, go. Of course, the classic think, pair, share is great for monitoring students' use of language. Give them a question. How did you spend time during the lockdown? Get th give them a minute to think about it. Get them to go put them in pairs and have them share the ideas in pairs. You walk around the classroom and monitor their use of language. Role plays such as student A 
You've heard your friend is struggling with the lockdown. You've arranged an online call to see how they're doing and offer support. Student B, you've been struggling with the lockdown. Your friend is calling you.